You're listening to the Black Eagles podcast with Sinan Schwarting and Khan Bayazit. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 79 of Besiktas International's Black Eagles podcast. I am your host, Sinan Schwarting, live from New York City with all the uh, traffic sounds and uh, sirens and whatnot that you can ask for, as always. Uh, and with me is your favorite co-host, probably by now, Evron Akman! How you doing? Good. I'm doing alright, how are you? Good, good. You know, better than most of Best of Touch. The Best of Touch, yeah. Twitter dumb, I would even say. Uh, People are busy these days. How are you? Gotta be mad about something. You know, I'm, I'm just relaxing. Good, so you're not, you're not worked out about anything? <laughs> not really. Good for you, sir. Good for you. It's it's good to be able to relax in the summertime. Uh, how how's the weather over there? By the way, you're not in the city. In the city, it's typically a little bit more sweltering than uh, upstate where where Evron is. I'm not that far. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's gonna be with, oh, right. it's gonna be basically like the same thing. But like you know, without the buildings, right? You've got maybe some more some more yeah, wind. I don't have. It's not all concrete. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it hasn't been such a terrible summer, I'll be honest. Especially like hearing those guys in Europe suffering. Uh, I don't think. Yeah, it's not that bad. They're just not used to it. Yeah, well, I mean, and they don't have any <laughs> AC anywhere. You know, that's that's a complication. It's funny they always make fun of us for having AC, and then I hear all these stories about them <laughs> suffering. And it's like I, I guess you can make fun of us. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, an interesting summer, and uh, we're back with, of course, plenty of Vestutage news. Most of it you will, our listeners, I mean, will have heard. Uh, some of it you may not have heard. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to try to keep it compact, as we do. Keep it into uh, an episode-length type of conversation here. Uh, Evron, why don't you get us started? Of course, I think the first news item we have to talk about is the reason friendly we just played uh perhaps I, we don't have to worry about spoilers i think we can say it was a slightly underwhelming performance yeah i mean we actually got to watch it which was outstanding i guess <laughs> and then uh that's, yeah that's important and we actually started watching it and then it wasn't that great to watch um <laughs> there was a couple a couple decent moments couple flashes of things going on but that's really about it there's a lot more like you, you know you just preseason you know you try to take the positives out of it which there weren't many it was more just like eh, okay and then there was a couple like things where players didn't look very good and expose themselves but you know we're just gonna hope that they uh they improve or transfers come that's really about all you can hope for yeah, yeah, and I think uh, we, we'll, we'll obviously get into it. There are elements where we can expect improvement, where we saw rust, you know, obviously, given it's very early in the summer still. And then there are parts that I don't think we should probably expect too much improvement and where we obviously need to be uh, resorting to drastic measures, I guess we could say. Um, but we'll probably be mostly in agreement now. You, you, why don't you give, get us started, everyone? Like, what to you are the like major factors of this match? Who are the who are the figures that you think merit? You know, we got to talk about here. Merit conversation. Um, I think half the back line. Um, half. Talking about the left uh, half. not Vita. Yeah, the left halves, which was Rocco and John Air, and then um, midfield and attack. I guess you know, kind of <laughs> the whole thing was. 
a little bit other than, I would say other than Lyage and Olsan, they linked together well. Everything else was a little bit disjointed. I mean, I actually uh, I would say that I know you think Roko was a big problem. I I would say that Ozzy's lack of touch on his passes was a bigger problem for me than Roko's, uh, just given. Uh, you know what we know as he can do. I think we, uh, the counterpoint Osan was very uh, for the his offensive passes weren't were a little sloppy, but building out of the back, he was very like as maybe he was just more relaxed or more focused. He never made a mistake, or not never, but barely made any mistakes building out of the back. But when we went to transition to the final third, yeah, I mean he even even sloppy passes. Even in the back, he his sometimes his passes were a little soft, you know, a little so that he'd make his the guy who was passing to kind of come towards him more than than would be beneficial <laughs> but like yeah for me ozan is uh he has the biggest excuse of all if, if anyone's gonna be rusty out there uh, it's probably gonna be him most of all we all know or roko yeah. or roko yeah fair enough true yeah i mean we all know that chanel gunesh had basically placed both of them now that you mention it fully in the doghouse. Neither of them got any playing time for most of last season, if not all of it, really, in, in the case of Roko. Uh, you know, 97% of it. Um, so, yeah, like, bo- all around, I'd say Rust was an issue, and I think especially guys like that, it was more obvious. Or like Tyler Boyd, he obviously had excuses. Um, He's never played alongside Quaresma. Playing with Quaresma means adjusting to a guy who could literally switch flanks at any moment. You never quite know uh, what, where he's, you know, in, in, in those scenarios, you have to sort of play off of that, position yourself a little differently. Uh, he clearly wasn't so comfortable there, but he... he f- I think he's he's comfortable on both wings, Boyd. Unlike Lenz, who yeah, no, only can that he was can't. on the right side. It's so. not that he can't switch flanks himself. Yeah. I just he didn't seem positionally to quite understand what was going on with that. Uh, but he did actually, as the first half, maybe maybe the the last quarter Five of minutes, it, 10 yeah, minutes, he, yeah, he started to settle in, assert himself a little bit, you know, be more comfortable playing alongside those guys. It was. You know, that was his first match alongside the, the starting unit. Remember, he came in mm-hmm. in his first in his first appearance with the second unit and not even a proper second unit. We're talking about guys who will never see minutes in the actual season. Uh, a third unit, if that, if, or, you know, or a youth unit. Um, so, you know, those three team. guys yeah. in particular for me get that excuse. You know, they, they have the most excuses as far as shaking up rust, getting settled into a unit. Sorry, but what were you just saying? I didn't mean to cut you off. So he played with like the cup guys when we play some random third division, fourth division team, you know. And they put out guys who haven't played all year. That was basically yeah. the I mean, unit he played with. It's, I'm glad you mentioned that. It is going to be nice to see the Turkish Cup again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't, you know, because of the whole head gash with Chanel and everything, that whole incident, we didn't get to see any cup football last year, and which means that uh, we didn't get to see academy guys. We didn't get to see guys who maybe we wouldn't see much, like Rocco or whatever. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun, especially with all of these guys. Maybe uh, getting more looks and all that, Ozan Aksun and, and and the like. But uh, yeah, I'm with you, generally speaking, except maybe for the Rocco thing. Uh, I, I think the rust bad is just Vita was clearly a lot better and oh for sure of the. And Gekon's fine, Vito's fine. He wasn't like awful, but he wasn't. He didn't like say, oh, okay, you know, maybe we should keep him. It's kind of like, still, we're, uh, maybe he's good enough, maybe he's not. I don't think he's really convincing anybody that Yeah, I don't think center back shouldn't come in. I know. still, yeah, the thing about Enzo Rocco that kind of honestly unsettles me and has unsettled me about the, the whole situation is that he hasn't shown anything either way. He's never yeah. made me say this guy's got to go. He's a terror. Like he's a disaster. Yeah. That was a disaster class. You know, like there's never been a moment like that with him. Uh, but he's also, like you say, never. You know, he's never given me a moment where I'm like, yo, this guy needs some playing time. Like we got to see what he's got. You know that. So there. I mean, it's compared weird. to Nedjip, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Who, who got playing time? We should mention. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I worry about selling a guy like Enzo Rocco, like. 
I would I would never want to sell him within the Super League. I would hate to see him go to like Trabzon and then like become really good and then like playing against us. That would be like I don't want to see anything like that. Um, and I don't want to see us not getting any money for him because at the end of the day, he came in something of a proven quantity as far as like playing for the Chilean national side that had won uh, silverware and uh, playing in a fairly established league in Mexico. I mean, I don't know. It's not the highest quality, but, you know, relative to us here in the U.S., relative to MLS, it's certainly leagues above that. You know, so, uh, you know, I worry about the negativity around Enzo Dorco. You know, I think a lot of it is is like hype. Um, but you're right to say he de- he definitely didn't make me think like, We've got to protect this asset, you know, for the club. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a weird one for sure. But another thing to note and where we're definitely in agreement is that John Air Erkin, I mean, that was a disaster class. And he's, it's not like we've never seen that before, huh? Yeah, I mean, this was just, it was, I hope it was just laziness. Because he looked like he's never defended in his life and it's just kind of aimlessly trotting along, <laughs> just placing himself wherever he felt right, didn't close anyone down. It was just, it was really like having like Quaresma or Ronaldinho playing left back, you know, just like. <laughs> Could he be regressing <laughs> in front? Like, uh, that was hard to watch. It was. Yeah, I mean, I am somewhat mystified that a guy who's been on the scene for so many years, who's been on the national team as a left back, who's, you know, shown weakness defensively certainly but he's actually shown flares of i don't want to say potential because he he hasn't been young in many years uh but definitely like flashes of of ability defensively at times you know especially in a pinch it seems to be going all out the window and i don't know if if it's that he's just losing it a little bit athletically and, and he's not able to make up for mistakes like yesterday on their on their one goal that was not basically utku <laughs> scoring for them <laughs> uh on their one goal john erkin uh and he he thought he was being slick by cutting off a pass out to the wing but he slipped and then couldn't recover i don't even think time. he slipped he just kind of like fell. stuck his rear end out or i don't even know what the hell he was doing like, but he <laughs> ended up on his like on the ground and then having to get up and trek back and for whatever reason that was sort of lazily done too but so he had no the guy on the wing very the casually place. right he he had all the time in the world to pick out his man and, and I mean, uh get them the goal that wasn't the first occasion either there was like a time where the guy faked the cross and he just he jumped up in the air <laughs> yeah, I remember 20 that. feet away and the guy is kind of casually cut in had his shot I was like what are you doing he was like a 7 year old like you know <laughs> guy yeah, pulls I his foot up and he goes flying to jump in that was the moment where like everybody was really bad mouthing John Air up to that point and I was like yeah he's made some some silly mistakes but whatever it's early in the match the friendly you know I was trying to be like the, the adult in the room you know kind of re- you know I didn't say anything because I don't want, you know you don't have to always say what you're thinking <laughs> uh, but yeah I was trying to be somewhat rational about it. And then that was the play where I was like, okay, this is not, <laughs> come on. And at that point I was like, <laughs> get him out of here. <laughs> but so, yeah, that was, he's, yeah, he has, that's, I've said from the beginning of the summer, and I'm going to say it again, left back is the most glaring need on this club. And, and what we saw yeah. yesterday against a bar, uh, you know, who finished in 12th place in Spain last year and not a very convincing. I mean, club. not they're not yeah, a bad not team. It was just like, guys like Kike. I mean, and they did, to Besiktas' defense, and I, and I don't think we have too much more to say about this match, but to Besiktas' defense, they only brought five substitutes to the match, Abart. And so they and they only made one sub. So they played – actually, I don't know about that. They may have made some subs later in the match. But they played their starting unit for much of the match, and that includes the second half where our young guys like Erdem and uh, – Kalafat and all these kids were playing against a starting unit from La Liga. You know, so the fact that they only 
had one goal scored against them, and it was the goal that Utku... Yeah, both the goals were banter goals. <laughs> yeah, Sunday, I mean, but the so. Utku goal was particularly, like, you can't blame anyone Except in that Utku. young unit <laughs> besides Utku. <laughs> like, that was... So, yeah. Do you want to describe that, the, the goal, the goals? We didn't even do that. I don't even think I want to describe the first one. The first one was just uh, John Air. There was a dent mark. Uh, the right winger, he decided he was going to stand in, in between, like 15 yards away from him, maybe, or 10 meters, 12 <laughs> meters, wherever you're, yeah, you know. Got caught in no man's land. Him, like, but, um, and then by, uh, the ball field. came in, and he just kind of like jumped at it, and like I don't even know what, it, like, what he was trying to do. Completely missed it, and then the right winger put a, a cross in, and that was that. Was that. Yeah, him. tucked it in. And you can't really blame anyone uh, on the other end of the goal, maybe um, Vita was the one covering the goal score. I don't know. It is whatever. I mean, once yeah, once you let, let the guy is. run through on goal, I could yeah, I, I that could ball pick out a had cross so much, if you let me with that much space. Like, I could, man, and I can hardly like <laughs> walk for that long. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm that kidding. Like, that uh, but yeah, exactly. The second goal. Was, hey, but so, how about the other goal? How about that second? Passing goal? around the back as they did the whole game. Utku just kind of like dying on it. The guy comes to like slide tackle him. Instead of like cutting back, he just panics and smacks the ball against the slide tackle and it bounces in. (laughs) It was actually like artful, the bounce. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, just like clear it, control it, turn, and he just kind of panicked. And the like, there was obviously a lot of bad luck involved as far as the bounce went. It, it yeah. bounced like perfectly up and over his reach and down into the goal. Like I feel like it even clipped a post. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I put maybe that was in my mind, but it was a it was a beautiful bounce uh, in a sense, but not if you uh, have hopes for Utku's future as a goalkeeper. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was disastrous, and and especially considering, like I said, that these kids. We're playing against the first team unit, uh, La Liga side, uh, and had managed to not concede. For it to be like that is is uh, particularly sad. Spirit of total uh, lives on. What can we say? The, yeah, we can never live past that. That's or or Cenk Gunen, <laughs> or I mean, there's a whole list of disaster class keepers that we've uh, attracted over the Akan years. Akan. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, Hakan Ali Khan. Who could forget? Uh, of note, I should say that there were some promising performances by a few youngsters. Um, in particular, Kerem Kalafat, I thought, played pretty nicely. Uh, everybody raved about Muhayer Oktay's control on the ball and distribution. He looked good again after scoring in his first appearance earlier in the preseason. Um, Ozan Akun, I didn't see a lot of, but as you, as Evron just said, uh, the ball was being played around the back a lot. Nobody up front was getting a lot of action, to be fair. Um, and the the player that people seem to be most excited about was Erdem Sechkin. Uh, Erdem looked promising, frankly, uh, on the ball. He had a lot of energy and vibrance. I, I think he's a guy alongside Kerem Kalafat, uh, Muhayyir Oktay, and probably Ozan Akun, just considering we don't have a lot of guys up front. I think he's our third or fourth striker, probably. So fourth right depending on what happens with Umut Nair and all that. I assume someone's getting loaned, honestly. You would assume. Um, but so, yeah, that... That, that's about all we really have to say for this match. Uh, lots of nice performances by the young kids. You can, e- Even though they, they didn't really concede against that first team La Liga side in A-Bar and all that, they didn't have a particularly good half either. Um, A-Bar p- probably deserved to win even more goals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, they were definitely exploiting that left side. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, and that's... I mean, let's let's take that as a perfect segue to talk about. So th- clearly, that we can t- talk about the problems that we have uh, going into the season with with this lineup. And the big problem is obviously the lack of a defensive unit 
on the left side of our defense. Um, in, of course, especially uh, left back. But even as far as the central defender goes, uh, as we've talked about on the podcast before, Vitor Hugo was supposed to come in and be the sort of answer uh, that fell through. We do have some news, um, and but interestingly, it has nothing to do with the left side of the defense, which we're talking about here. Uh, the right side of the defense now has another guy vying for position. And it's not like we didn't need it. Gokhan Gonu is not getting any younger. But uh, everyone, tell us a little bit about our new player. Yeah, we signed um, the uh, Brazilian right back Douglas from Barcelona on a free transfer through your deal, which is uh, pretty good. He played for Sivas last year and had 10 goal contributions, which is very good for a defensive player. But he's, you know, he's Brazilian, so he's basically like a, a winger playing in defense. Um, certainly offensively, he's very good. Defensively, we're not so sure. Um, we'll see, but you know, he's only 28, almost 29, so free transfer, and reasonable salary. The important, yeah, yeah, the reasonable salary is 800k, and, he, and then he can slot in if necessary, right mid or left back, which are his secondary positions, but more so right mid than left back. But you know, in a pinch, that's important. In a pinch, he can do either. It's kind of like John um, Eric, except a little, bit, well, yeah, a little bit better, I right know. I would say. And more talent. Certainly more talent going forward and more like uh, creative ability. Yeah. We don't know. Again, defense. But yeah, it's a good move. Uh, we definitely need the next step after Gokhan Gonu, whatever that is. And he gives us a kind of bridge, obviously. Uh, if Kedem Kalafat can develop in the next two or three years into the next option, then we've got, you know, the next gen sorted out as well. So. Uh, at least, I'm crossing my fingers here, uh, at least we should not see Nedjip uh, as a right back <laughs> ever again. <laughs> That's really the main thing I'm hoping for here. Um, yeah, 800K, that, that's a great salary relative to the rest of the guys on the team, especially considering he's likely going to be a starter in the next year or two. Uh, let's keep going, though. Uh, while we're on this talk of transfers, let's focus more on the defense. Because really, all the rumors that are worth talking about, anyway, are really relating to, to defensive options here. Um, number one, I think the guy who's being given the most traction at the moment is a central defender who many people will recognize the name of. He's played for Feyenoord. FC Porto, most recently for Stoke City in the Premier League and then in the Championship, a Dutch central defender by the name of Bruno Martins Indy. Martins, 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 I, 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 yeah, yeah, we got another one of those. Yeah, we'll see how uh, a Turkish uh, sideline reporter or it says his name or whatever color commentator it'll, it'll probably stick whatever they go with but um yeah what do you have to say about that one everyone i'm sure you know the guy yeah i haven't seen him play for a couple of years because you know he's been in the championship it's not i'm not a avid watcher of stoke city believe it or not but um <laughs> you know no um, he's definitely got some experience to him He's a the lefty. Potters? <laughs> Are they the Potters? Potters? They're the Potters, yeah. He's a lefty, which <laughs> is kind of, we don't have a lefty center back. Um, yeah, and that's a big need for Abdullah Avci. He's, he's spoken he's specifically. not slow, but he might not be the best on the ball. Yeah, that's, but, so I, I think Abdullah Avci wants a left-footed central defender who can be on the ball. So he fits one of those check boxes. You can check off one of those boxes. I mean, he's not Maybe awful not on the ball. It's not like he's challenge is just he's not you know ideal i would say would you say he's as good as domingo's vida on the ball um maybe slightly worse maybe like okay. in between miran and vida all right well so it's a step up plus he's left-footed yeah. plus he's bigger and slightly more athletic and uh probably better suited to the, the physicality of the super league i don't know vita's a monster i want i want to want to knock him down no 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 no. i mean a relative to ec miran yeah, he's pretty physical also he's just a yeah, no, he's a I, clumsy I, physical 
Yeah, and he doesn't have the the. He's not as top heavy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I more lean. Yeah. Much into, the guys like Mariki or Marichi or whatever. Like I, I, I think I can imagine him not being physical. You know, pushed out of the box or you know being a little bit more imposing in the air. We'll see. Um, yeah. Maybe. So yeah, that, that's probably the most concrete rumor right now. We've even got talk of numbers. Supposedly, uh, Stoke City wanted six million euro for him. Uh, we talked them down to four, and supposedly again we've got talk of installments. They've broken it down to four installments, so four one million euro installments. I'd imagine. Uh, Evron and I were joking, you know, pre-episode about how uh, Pepe, the guy who Arsenal just brought, they're. People are making fun of them for dividing the 80 million euro over four installments, where we could theoretically here be dividing four million euros over four installments. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. We are the the small fish, or I guess we could say the big fish in a small pond, small pond, right? Yeah. <laughs> if Turkey is the small pond or the Super League. Um, anyway, do you have any sort of closing thoughts on Bruno Martinez Indy? How do you feel mm-hmm. if he's the guy? Because he's the he is right now. Besides uh, Carol Metz, who's a he plays for AIK, you know, in, in Sweden. Uh, he's an Estonian central defender who supposedly Abdul Avci listed as someone he had his eye on. I don't, you know. How, first of all, between those two, who you got? Um, I mean, I've never seen Metz in my life. So, therefore... So I do not watch the Swedish League too often or Estonia, so, I mean, I can't give an opinion on him. You know, Indy's would not Would you really... intrinsic... Are you the type of guy who might intrinsically trust the experience of a guy like Bruno Martins in the, you know, knowing he's um, played for well, Porto, since I know Stoke I'm City? More, no more what I'm getting, I'm not as excited as I know ah, what his ceiling okay. is. So, it's more yeah. of the flip side. You're, you're underwhelmed by Bruno Martins. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's okay, you know. It's, of note, he's still only 27, right? So there's yeah. still At least like not five or six years in his prime, right? Uh, he's settled. We'll see. Yeah. It's not going to be a scoot in, but... I haven't seen him either. You know, I didn't. I also did not follow the Kind of fallen off year. the map a little bit since Stoke got relegated. He's not on the national team anymore. If I had to compare him, though, as a, as the player I kind of remember him as before, you know, he sort of fell off my radar, I actually have him much in the mold of a guy like Marcelo. You know, sort of. Or our Marcelo. I mean. I, uh, I, they played similarly. They're both capable of being physical, but also, you know, not like kind of awkward on the ball or like too big, you know, too bulky, not like that. Um, I think where Marcelo had a little bit more ability as far as like actually going forward. I remember his goal for example. Yeah. Uh, and his, was it his last match with us? He had a really nice goal. Um, I don't. I don't see Martin Indy doing much with his feet in front of the goal, but I could see him like heading a couple in. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I think they're sort of similar in a lot of ways, and, and also a lot of, they have some of the same deficiencies. But perhaps that's the kind of hole we're trying to fill there. Anyway, I think that's the only big rumor as far as a central defender, so there might be some truth to it. Obviously, we've talked about Timothy Kolodziak. Uh, supposedly, Saint Etienne are looking at him. Yeah, I think he was on loan there. So, so uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. And, like, let, let's talk. So, just like it might be hard for a guy to pick Besiktas over Saint Etienne. Because of them being in in Liga and uh, is Saint Etienne in Europe? I would imagine so. Yeah, they uh, the qualifying for the Europa League, I believe, directly ah. to the group stage. Interesting. So, <clears throat> you know, that's something to consider here. I think uh, it's not just going to a, a league with more uh, prominence, you know, with a slightly better reputation than Turkey. It's also going to a team that's doing fairly well there. That is in Europe. Just like we are, um, you know, like and he already so played the, there before, so he knows what he's getting into. And exactly, you know, there's a sense of familiarity for him. But we are now. This is big, big news. I think uh, it seems almost all but likely that Shinji Kagawa 
will not be staying in Istanbul with Bezirtas. He's looking towards Celta Vigo, supposedly. And now, this is different from the situation um, with Kolodziak, where it's a team that's done, that's coming off a good season, you know, where, like, with Celta Vigo, you could very much make the argument that they they barely avoided relegation last year in La Liga, and they are not going to be playing in Europe. So Besiktas has an advantage in that regard, in that they're yeah. a more of a team that's, you know, together and putting together results and can offer the uh, appeal of Europe and, you know, the, the, the cameras that come with it, you know, the, the opportunity to maybe go far into the tournament, tournament and raise your profile, show the world that you're still doing something. Uh, <laughs> I, I would imagine that that would be the argument for Bex Touch over Celta Vigo. But regarding Shinji Kagawa, we know that he's long had this dream of, of playing in Spain, in La Liga. So that's tough. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> apparently, tough the uh, I think it was the coach of Celta Vigo says he has no clue. If they're interested or not, he's like, oh, I, he said he's, I don't know if he really has no clue or if he's just trying to play it off. He's like, why would I know if we're interested in a player? Yeah, I mean, maybe stuff. he's just saying that's the GM. That's not me. Yeah. You know, but there's another element too, which is supposedly that in uh, Spain, in La Liga, you're only allowed three non-European players. And they have three non-European players. Uh, two of them are Uruguayan and supposedly... They're trying to like dig up the family tree of one of them to prove that he has some sort of European heritage in order to make the room for Shinji Kagawa. I don't know if they'll be able to do that. And if they aren't able to do that, I don't know, you know, what the dynamics of that will be for a club like Celta Vigo. I don't know who these I mean, guys are. They're a pretty good club, Celta Vigo. They just had a bad season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were in the Europa League final, not semifinals. A couple of the years we, the year we went to the Europa League. Uh, Quarterfinal, we lost Leon. They went one further, lost to Manu. Yeah, and I think they're. And on they should have won like, that uh, game. They choked horribly. I believe they're on that coast of Spain as well. I mean, I'm sure it's a nice place to live. And they got a Emre Moore and uh, Okayo Kusu. So. So yeah, there's some Turks Turk there. Continued. There's some Turks there. If he's really needs that bond <laughs> for some reason, uh, no. But yeah, so it doesn't look good for Kagawa. Uh, but I'm, we're off topic a little. I only mention that because it's a similar dynamic for a guy like Kolodziak to decide between Sen Etienne versus Besiktas, to decide between Celta Vigo and Besiktas. Of course, Celta Vigo is in a higher profile league than Sen Etienne even. So uh, there is that. Yeah. There is the La Liga intrigue. Uh, I would still argue that Besiktas is the bigger of the clubs. and like Fan base-wise, uh, for sure, yeah. And, you know, I think in terms of providing him in the short term with a platform. I mean, he's really going to play prove... against Barcelona, Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Atletico if he goes there. So I don't think yeah, we can offer that. Yeah, but I don't that. think that that's – it's not realistic to expect him to shine against that kind of talent at this stage in his career, perhaps. And maybe I'm, under, maybe I'm underselling him. You know, maybe that's the bet he's making on himself. But I think short term at this stage of his career, if he'd made a – short-term commitment to, to Besiktas for another year or like a one plus one, you know, with an option for himself. Uh, I feel like he could really say, like he could bet on himself taking Besiktas into the knockout stages of the Europa League yeah. and, uh, you know, making some noise there because that's the kind of competition where he could thrive and where the competition he's playing against is not quite like, you know, Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, you know, Valencia even, you know, or, or Atletico with, with who are hot right now with Raul Felix and all that. So, um, and Diego Costa. <laughs> uh, but so, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure he's still at a level where he's up to that task, you know? Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I don't know. That's all I've seen player. But Celta Vigo has a very, um, very good squad that could definitely compete for Europa League. I would say Champions League is probably too much for them, but definitely top seven, eight. That's where they should be, especially the way they spent. But not this year, obviously, because well, they're not. In. Well, I mean, compete for the Europa League spot. That's what I meant. For a spot in, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I just mean like from a financial perspective, you know, considering this season, 
I think he could have used this season as a launch pad yeah. for, for, for more than South of Vigo, maybe. On the other hand, I don't know. Maybe he's not. I, whatever. It's, it's neither here nor there. <laughs> the sad news is that he's likely not going to be a Bechersage player next season. Um, and I did buy a shirt for this with this season with his name on it. So that's going to be a, a weird collector's <laughs> item for, for years to come. Although, like, I didn't want to buy another shirt from last season. I already have them all. I'm not a collector like that. And I wanted a Kagawa shirt, so I don't even feel bad about it. Whatever. Anyway, uh, let's go back to the real focus here, which is on defense. Uh, there are two options now being raised as far as left backs. And, of course, this is the pivotal position we were talking about early on in the episode where we really need to put some work in. Um, Evron, walk us through these options. I think the hot ticket right now has shifted from Riza Dramishi, who was slightly in the news in the last couple of days, to really the, the, the hot news item is Evron. Uh, Jami Lou Collins, the Nigerian international left back who plays for Paderborn in the Bundesliga. Yeah, and he's coming off some time in the uh, AFCON as well, yeah, correct? Yeah, uh, I did actually see him because I, for some reason, I like watching AFCON, but uh, so I, just, oh, it's a fun I happened, to, it's a I happened to watch the semifinal where he, he played in that game because previously uh, Ola Aina of Torino was playing. I don't know if he suspended or hurt, but he wasn't able to play. So this man slotted in and faced up against Mahrez for 90 minutes and, you know, did a pretty good job. Pretty so well. I really love the AFCON, and I think it's, First of all, it's a continent of very fun football, like stylistically. But uh, there's also that weird dynamic of like Northern Africa versus Western Southern, Africa, you know, yeah. Western and then Southern Africa. Like it's a, it's a just it's a fun tournament, you know. And, and there's always like, if you're a follower of a club in Europe, there's always the likelihood that you're going to be seeing some sort of talent. Um, that's going to be emerging in Europe soon, you know, like among the younger guys and amongst the sort of less heralded uh, African teams. And then for the for the bigger teams like the Nigerians and whatnot, you, you really see players in Europe kind of emerging now with uh, clubs in like Liga or whatever, La Liga. Some of them, like there are quite a few players who play in Turkey in the, in the tournament. So, um, yeah, it's a fun, it's just a fun tournament, you know. Yeah. Especially maybe for us in North America where we're looking at like the gold cup <laughs> where you know it's like the Virgin Islands <laughs> stuff like that. You know? Um so yeah man, no, I, I I'm with you as far as it being a fun tournament to watch. And yeah, I actually did not see the game you're talking about, but I did watch a bunch of it myself. But so yeah, Jamilu Collins. A quick scouting he's report. also how old is he? He's twenty four of Collins is that um he can actually defend uh going forward is I'm not so sure about uh but you know, well, that's okay. he can actually defend. You know, I saw him stand up Mares for just about 90 minutes before he scored a nice free kick. But you know, he can't stop a free kick as a left back. Well, if we're keeping Quaresma, play him on the left side, and yeah. we need someone. He's, to he's, <laughs> I mean, he can push forward. He's got a lot of pace. Um, but he's more, you know, he's more disciplined than I think people will anticipate. He's he sits his position, uses his body well, uses all his attributes well, and he. I'm not going to say he's world class, but you know, for us, he would be a good defender. So, yeah, the Nigerian national team is nothing to sniff at. Yeah. I think it's a pretty good uh, cultivator of talent. And uh, yeah, he's coming from he's coming from Paderborn. Paderborn in Germany. Yeah, he used to play in Croatia. Uh, which you know, like it's not like he's literally coming from nowhere. You know, uh, we're not like developing a, a raw talent. You know. He's, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I'd be all for it. I love his age, 24. You know, that's even slightly beneath the Ljajic and Karius kind of uh, line that I, that I aim for, typically. Uh, and it kind of slots more in with, like, Dorakan's age. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, it, or even Ozan. I mean, Ozan's kind of in between. He's, like, 25 now. Yeah, 26. something like that, 25, 26. So uh, it's that you're starting at that point. You're starting to look like you have a real core now, and that's actually the good news about all of the the, the news coming in. Martins Indy also 27 sort of fits in there. Um, the next guy who's coming up, who I, I've already kind of briefly mentioned, Riza Dormishi, uh, also fits into that age range. Uh, tell us a little bit about him. 
Um, yeah, he plays for Lazio. They paid eight million to get him last summer, and uh, I guess he's kind of like the backup to Jordan Lukaku. So he might be available, but uh, obviously the prices would be. I doubt they'll, you know, they're not going to go for free or for two million. So it would probably be a loan with option to buy, and then we'd have a higher salary, all that. And he's a little bit older. He's 25, so, actually. Only 25. Yeah, 25. He's one year older. Or year yeah, old, like older players. than last year. Yeah, sure. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, older than Collins. Oh, yeah. Okay. That, uh, he's also more established, so. You know, you I, I thought you meant older than he was when he went for eight million. Oh also- yeah, no, he's he's still basically the same age, only one year, but he plays for the D- Danish national team. Obviously, his name is not Danish; he's of Albanian descent. So that may or help or not help if him coming here depends what his opinion is. But um, yeah, because it depends like <laughs> where he sits yeah. on the whole Albanian thing. Yeah, but like uh, my neighbor upstairs, I found out who's a Galatasaray fan is Albanian. So he's yeah. Like, Obviously, not anti-Turk by any stretch. Um, interesting. Uh, he is yeah. also yes. He's a national team player for Denmark. Oh, sorry, for yeah. Denmark, which is yeah. interesting. So he's a Albanian, Dual national, Danish. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously an intriguing talent. Personally, like it has nothing to do with football. Or I guess in a way it has everything to do with football, depending on your stance. But I, I've, I never really, I'm the kind of guy who never wants to do business with, with the Lazios of the world. Um, but, you know, here we are needing a left back desperately. So, uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take anyone at this stage. I, I like the notion of a Jamilu Collins more, especially with the profile you mentioned being kind of more defensive. Collins would be more affordable also. And we could probably buy him outright where Dermisi would be and more of like a this. loan and all that jazz. Think about the, the profile you described for Jamilo Collins as being more of a defensive fullback, you know, more uh, disciplined defensively. We really were pairing him not with Gokhan Gonu, but Douglas long term. And that's a good yeah. pairing, right? If you have one guy who's more of a mind to play, to go forward, and another guy who can sit back. And they can kind of shift into that kind of three back, three man back line if if uh, if Douglas goes on a run, you know. Like I think that's a nice concept, you know, yeah. uh, formation wise. So I like it. I like what we're saying here. And he's he's not a small dude either. Jamie Lou Collins for left back. I think he's about six feet tall. Yeah. Um, can I don't know. He's one eighty three. Yeah, so he's like five ten, five eleven. So um. You know, he's not a tiny little dude like Jordi Alba. He can, you know, if we if he would stay back as you know the the third center back, we wouldn't have to be worried temporarily about having you know a, a Gary Medell back there again, yeah, slapped yeah. around by Adebayo or something. <laughs> or they just like loft a, yeah. a like a slightly <laughs> higher pass over his head because they know he's a little dude. Yeah, um, yeah that's great. Uh, other news, like while we're on this positive uptick, uh, Lecce has officially given up on Burak Yilmaz, who has stated officially he wants to win a championship this season with Besiktas, which As also means that he's here. probably, he is probably amenable to leaving next summer, which I also see as positive because he's going to be going into his 36th year of life on planet Earth at that point. And uh, he'll have one year left on his contract with us. So if we can get a little money as well. Supposedly, Lecce was like talking eight million. Uh, oh, shit. I was hearing they're trying to get him for free, so. Ah, uh, well, yeah, there's all yeah, kinds the- of <laughs> gossip. But anyway, if we could get some money for uh, at that stage of uh, much older Burak, uh, that sounds fine. And I certainly think he has a lot to offer Besiktas this season. Uh, hopefully more of, you know, his first... You know, yeah, well, now he's going to be the captain, supposedly. So, so yeah, that's a final note uh, because it ties in very well to this. We have a new captain. You go, you talk, everyone. I don't want to yeah. uh, hog the mic. Mr. Burak Yilmaz is our uh, is our captain next year, and supposedly Atiba is supposed to be the co-captain. There's rumors that he was offered the main captain, he turned it down, but we don't know about that. Is that's just kind of talk. But yeah, those those are two main captains right there. Atiba and Burak. Yeah, and Burak is the captain-captain, and uh, Atiba is the vice-captain. 
Uh, interesting. Very interesting. What what are you, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I mean, I guess it's not going to be Ozan. That's I think Ozan's been wearing it in the friendlies, but Burak and Atiba also weren't there. So I guess that kind of makes sense. But um, yeah, I've actually heard Ozan might be still kind of lobbying for it if that's possible. But yeah, I think they are also saying that Gekongunu is going to be the third captain, not Ozan. So I don't know what's up with that, but. Uh, you know, maybe Olsan just doesn't need that attention. He can just go about yeah. his business in midfield without the armband. Recover. He already has a number 10, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One one prestige at a time. Tone it down, kid. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you think about the selection of Burak, though? It's, I mean, I'm assuming Abja wants to be able to talk to his captain. And, uh, yeah, well, the fact that he's, he's experienced. Yeah. You know. A, he has a questionable track record, I guess, with his temperament. But as long as the players like him and the coaches like him, actually, that's all that's important. Not if we like him, because we're not. Yeah. You know, he's the one interacting with everyone. He's the leader, and I think he's definitely a passionate dude. Yeah, I mean, sometimes too passionate yeah. though. You really want well, to too calm passionate. Your head. Uh, you don't want your captain being the guy who's like flipping off the ref, which he has a tendency <laughs> to do. Um, I gotta be honest, I think that in a vacuum, the obvious choice should be Atiba Hutchinson. Um, you know, take into consideration the Turkish aspect, Abdul Avci maybe doesn't speak English or whatever. Um, take into consideration the fact that Atiba may not be getting a ton of playing time, given his age and Dorakan's emergence and whatever. Uh, sure, okay. I still think you go with a guy like Gokhan Gonu over Burak Yilmaz. Uh, previously, the big argument against that would be, oh, he's come from other clubs in Turkey, you know, but so did <laughs> Burak Yilmaz. Yeah. Uh, in fact, our rivals as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. For me, that's a questionable decision. Uh, Gokhan Gonu also gets a little heated at times on the pitch, but I think not to the extent that Burak does. And he yeah, has a. Definitely not much calmer, you know, much more veteran presence. I'd imagine he commands much the same respect as far as, you know, being a really good veteran, uh, hard worker, kind of, you know, showing the young guys how, you know, how they can sustain their careers. Because he's, you know, not young and he still plays at a very high level with a lot of energy. Um, I I almost got Gokhan Gono's shirt. Now that Shinji Kagawa did not um, I'm sad I didn't, to be honest, because now the more I'm talking about him, I really feel like he's established himself as a really solid Besiktas player, because he's been with us for a few seasons now. Yeah. Um, and he's really given it his all. This is last year on his contract, though, also. Yeah, so next year it's not like I can get one. Damn, I really made a mistake. Um, anyway, but so questionable decision, maybe. But like you said, at the end of the day, it, it is the coach's decision. It is reliant on what other players are reacting to. You know, perhaps Abdul Abji has just seen I mean, the they way guys other. react to Barack. And yeah, well, from the national side, right? Because he, he coached the national team for some time. And obviously, Barack played for the national side. Um, but yeah, you know, he, maybe he's just seeing something that we don't see as far as how guys react to him, you know, his teammates. Um, the assistant coaches, right? There's, there's other factors. Uh, should we even talk about that before we go? <laughs> I guess just quickly mention. Yeah, we'll all right. Much into it. Since this is turned and it's not as positive as it's been going, for, let's just let, let's just uh, dig the knife a little deeper. All right, yeah. Last point, really last point, I promise this time, is that, of course, many people will know that after the friendly match against Abar, the fans rushed the pitch to protest the appointment of Orhan Ak as Abdul Avji's assistant coach. Do you have anything to say about this, Evron? Um, I mean, the fans don't like him for a couple reasons. This is political background, and he supposedly once pulled a gun on Bish Touch fans, but I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what actually happened. So, you know, I think it's like some people are mad and some people are just mad about just, just want to be mad so that, you know, 
really depends. Yeah. I think, you know, it doesn't look good when you're storming the field and trying to attack a member. Just yeah. Uh, <laughs> violence is bad, okay? Uh, yeah. Especially violence against your own. Yeah, come on, guys. Like, it's just... I'll be honest. I'm a very political person. I get it. Like, we all have feelings that are strong about things that some people may not understand. But, like, at the end of the day, first of all, this is football. It's supposed to be our kind of escape from the real world. Uh, and even if you don't see it like that, it's the dawn of a new era. We've, like, opened a new chapter. We have a new coach, a bunch of new players. Uh, we're, we have a coach who's like giving the young guys in our club a look. We, I've been yelling about this since you know Gunesh joined the team about like, do we not even have an academy? Like here we actually have some kids getting looks, um, you know, being given legit options to maybe break into the team or at least start getting minutes. Uh, we've got an exciting new regime that's going to try to play a different style of football. It's like the summer, they're in Europe. They're, you know, like in the mountains of Austria. Like, can't enjoy themselves. Like, they, they can't even, like I, it's almost sad on a human level, man. If you're a best you touch man, and you have the privilege of being able to go to the mountains of Austria and watch our team play these, like, you know, the, the, the budding of this new generation, this new era. That's what you want to go spend your time doing? Like, I don't know. I've, the world's a messy place, and I don't want to get too... I don't want to get in trouble, you know, with the politics at all, because I really don't know the politics much. I know there's sort of the Gulen stuff, and, the, you know, I don't... As outsiders to that, as, as gringos over here, we don't we don't have to encounter that on, an, on a daily basis. Uh, maybe we're fortunate as such, privileged, but... Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's tarnishing what should be a nice time all around for the club. Do you have any comments? Not really. That, is. <laughs> that covers no, it. No, my position to really talk about is would rather we uh, you know we just don't embarrass ourselves nationally. That's kind of what we care about. Yeah, yeah, and like think about guys like those kids who are just getting their first moments with the club, or Tyler Boyd who's just joined the club. Like, that's their first vision of, of what's going on <laughs> with the club. Like, that's just that's not a good look. It's not a good look for anyone. Uh, but anyway, let's take it out, man. But take us out, everyone. So coming up, we've got some fun matches, right? Tell us tell us who we're playing next. Give us some info. Oh, yeah, we're playing, uh, I believe it's tomorrow, right? Or Monday. Mm -hmm. um, Apollon Larissa. Also in Austria, in Bischofen, you know, if you speak Austrian. <laughs> and then, um, we have, coming up, we, after that, August 2nd, we play Udinese. And then August 4th is Brescia. And August 10th is the last game against Pontiac the Night Ghost. So those are, you know, close up preseason. Hopefully we'll have a new transfer by then. Maybe uh, Mr. Collins. That's my hope. And, uh, you know. The rest. You ready to take on the world? Yeah, tell us quickly, like, on the spot, what's the central defender you want at this stage? Uh, I've always wanted the same guy that I don't think anyone really wants, Edgar Ye. Um, plays for Lille. Right out there, man. Speak it into existence. Portuguese center back, he's would probably be available on loan for free, like, no, no loan fee, but they loaned him out last season to Nantes for free, so suppose they wouldn't really, you know, charge us more. But, you know, ball playing, mobile, Barcelona, B, former player, uh, was Brian by Bielsa to Leo, so, you know, I respect him a lot, and if he thinks he's good enough, I think he's good enough, but, uh, you know, he's not a lefty, and I guess we're not interested in him, so. Well, There's that, but, uh, I just hope it's... Man. Got it. I don't, I don't want an, uh, an established guy like Indy, who I know I'm getting. I want a guy who has potential to you know to improve like a shrewd shrewd move not just a, an obvious lazy one all right well let's see let's i mean no you've actually got a pretty good track record as far as like listing guys who we ended up getting tyler boyd being the latest coup for your uh, your magic list uh so who yeah. knows man who knows maybe maybe you've got the touch 
Put that into it. Put that into the ether, man. Speak into existence. Who knows? Uh, the one game we didn't mention is, of course, our first match of the regular season, which will be against Sivaspor on the road. Uh, that will be on August 18th. But anyway, until probably later in the week, after we have a couple more friendlies to talk about and hopefully some news. Go Besiktas! Besiktas International hopes you enjoyed this program.